Okay, and welcome to another Cool Dude Clems electronic workshop video. And before you today, you see another tape recorder, which needs a little bit of seeing too. Now, cosmetically, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, okay, yeah, we're missing a couple of knobs here, and the counter window is missing. But those, unfortunately, have been lost to the sands of time, so... You know. And, well, mechanically, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, something's making a bit of a noise in there, but, you know, everything works. Electronically, however, it's not so good. Because although it does record and play back, as a matter of fact, I'm recording on this right now, so I can prove that to you. So let's just rewind that. Turn my amplifier up a little bit. Well, mechanically, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, something's making a bit of a noise in there, but, you know, everything works. Electronically, however... That's where the good stuff stops, though, because the internal speaker on this thing does not work. At all. Now, I'm just going to unplug this from my amplifier, so the only thing it can use is the external speaker. So I'll start it playing again. I mean the internal speaker. And, as you can hear, there is absolutely nothing. No matter if I have the volume all the way down, or all the way up, complete silence. Also, the level meter seems to act a bit weird. When it's playing, it moves backwards for some reason. Don't know if it's supposed to do that. However, recording-wise, it still works. Let me just plug my microphone back in. Right, so I put that on to record. And now, as you can see, when I speak into it, well, when I speak into the microphone that I've got placed on the table, which is picking up a lot of hum from this thing, from the motor, because the motor's a bit noisy. Well, you can see when I speak, the meter moves, and of course, if I turn this all the way up, it's, it'll move even more. So, let's take this thing apart and take a look inside. Okay, I never, ever, ever want to take the front of this tape recorder again. Well, then I'm going to have to if I want to do any additional head cleaning because the head cover has actually been glued on there. So, uh, if I want to clean the heads, I'm going to have to take that off. And that was a real bugger to get off. Yeah, that erase head could do with a bit of a clean, and the playback record head's got a bit of a speck on it. But that's not going to be too much of a big deal. So, anyway, here is the mechanism. I think I've worked out why this is in such good condition mechanically. Because it looks like someone has been in here before me and done a little bit of replacing. I pull the brake pads back, you can see that the brake pads look as if they have been replaced. There's a green pad here and a green pad there. And also, I think the belts have been replaced as well because they're nice and tight. This one is nice and tight. And so is this one. And of course the mechanism itself works nice and well. So, I'll turn it on. I want to press play. As you can see, the capstan and pinch roller engage. And then the pressure pad comes up against the head. And this thing is turning, and that's driven, I believe, that's driven by a friction clutch that runs off this belt here. And that's always engaged. There's very little tension there. I mean, very little torque there. Just enough to turn the reel. As a matter of fact, when I put this into rewind, you see these move over, so this engages with that. You turn this, but you can also see this one is turning as well. Which just proves what I was saying about this one always being engaged. But, like I said, it's, you know, there's almost no torque there whatsoever. So, it doesn't really inhibit the rewind. And, of course, for fast forward, these two move over, so this one is engaging the reel. So it can turn faster. Or turn faster. So, let's see if we can find out what's the deal with that speaker. I've got the back off this now so we can take a look inside. So I think the first step in trying to find out what is wrong with the speaker is actually trying to see if the signal is even getting to the speaker. So, uh, over here looks to be the am amplifier. And also, strangely enough, I appear to have replacement transistors, so if 
the amplifier itself isn't working. I can replace these tran these crusty old transistors. Because I just happened to be looking in the shed to see if I had any spare, well I've got loads of spare transistors and I happened to come across these two. And they're exact replacements for these. Strangely enough. So that's a stroke of luck right there. I've also done a little bit of recapping, well, temporary recapping there, just to see if that would sort out the strange meter behavior, but it's still, it's still going a bit weird, so... Uh, there's probably something else going on in there. So, anyway, we've got the speaker here. We've got this grey and red wire, which goes along here, and into this block of terminals here. Then there's a black and, uh, what was it now? Oh yeah, there's a black and red wire. Let's go into that. It's coming out here. And the other end of that black and white wire is going over there. So now we know where the sig now we know where the amplifier is connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace these wires and see if we have continuity. Okay, so I've got the speaker disconnected. Now just before I start pulling bits out and testing bits and pieces, I just want to make sure that the speaker, it's not the speaker itself that's the problem, so I've got a battery here and a piece of wire. I'm just going to connect that up to the speaker, and if it responds, well now the speaker's still good. Okay. speaker still seems to be good, because that's making noise and I saw the cone move. So the problem has to be elsewhere. Okay, I think I'm just going to have to totally rewire the speaker up, because the way, they, the way this is all wired up here, it doesn't even make any sense. I mean, I don't know if someone's been in here and rearranged all the wiring, or if it's always been that way, but... I mean, for instance here, you would think this grey wire on the speaker connection, you'd think this grey wire is the ground, but no, it's the red wire, and I can prove that. I'll just put a clip on the red wire here, and turn my meter onto continuity. If I touch the case with the other probe, there we are, we have continuity on the red wire. If I do the same with the grey wire, There is no continuity. So anyway, this is our output to the speaker. This is where the speaker would be connected, and this does not, there is no continuity to anything else. And if we go over to the speaker plug, okay, yes, there we've got continuity there, but nothing else is showing any signs of continuity at, at all, so no wonder we're not getting any sound out of the speaker, there's just There's just nothing there. Not even on the connections of the amplifier itself. Or anything. So I'm just going to totally rewire all these jacks here and hopefully that's going to fix it. Well, I'm going to take that back about what I said about rewiring this thing because it turns out that the wiring on this thing is actually okay. It's not as confusing as I originally thought because I went over this again and everything does make sense. The only thing that doesn't make sense is why they made the red wire the ground on the speaker connection. I found out that this output jack doesn't work, so I've just taken the speaker connection and connected it there, so now we do have continuity between the speaker connection, I mean the speaker wire, and the amplifier. So if I put my meter onto continuity, and just probe the amplifier board, we have continuity there. So. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this speaker to the wire here, see if the amplifier does work, and we'll see where we go from there. Well, I'm just trying to switch this to one, um, three and three fourths. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> yes, it is pretty difficult to do this without the lever on there. Yes. The internal amplifier does seem to be working because I've connected it to this speaker. As you can tell, it did play. 
The only trouble is, it is still acting a little bit weird, but of course because I'm shooting the video, it's decided to behave itself. But every now and then there's this pop, and the sound will just go, and then there's another pop and it will come back, and it will just keep doing that. But of course, like I said, because I'm recording a video, it's not going to do that. So I'm going to do a recapping on the amplifier, and I'm going to replace these two transistors here. Just seeing if tapping them makes it do it again. It could be a case of the old germanium transistors with their tin whiskers syndrome. We don't know that. I don't actually know if these are germanium or silicon, but... So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a recap of the amplifier. Might just as well replace the transistors. I mean, after all, I've got spares. Another weird thing is, when I press record, I can hear myself out of the speaker now. That's, that's quite normal. I'm speaking into this microphone here. I can hear myself out of the speaker. Now, I've got this set to 3 and 3 fourths, but here's a weird thing. If I switch this to 1 and 7 eighths, there's now a, a lot more high frequencies coming through the speaker, which is... seems a little strange. So could we possibly be hearing the pre-equalized sound that's going to be going on the tape coming through the speaker? I'd say quite possibly. Shush. Okay. Well, I've replaced the main filter capacitors. I would have liked to have replaced all of them, but I just don't have suitable replacements for those. But I have replaced the output transistors in the power amplifier, and that hasn't sorted out the weird popping issue. It's still doing that, so I think that might be a dirty contact in one of the switches somewhere, because if I give this a gentle tap when it does that, the sound comes back, so... Just think a simple contact cleaning is in order there. However, this tape recorder has been cool dude clemmed. I've made a few modifications to this. Now, the first modification is a modification of a modification. At some point in this tape recorder's life, the backlight for the meter got replaced by an LED. Because I assumed that the original light burnt out, so somebody replaced it. Now, I've got no problem with that, using an LED. The problem I did have, it was connected to the AC from the transformer. Effectively, the same thing that you would get if you were halfway rectifying it. And that made it really, really flickery, and I just could not stand that flicker. So what I did, I connected the LED to the smooth DC supply. So now there shouldn't be any flicker, and I've changed the series resistor from 820 ohms, which was originally in there, to 2.2 kilo ohms to compensate for the apparent change in brightness that we'll get now that it's working on rectified and smooth DC. And the other change I made to this tape recorder is I made a little change to the recording equalization because this tape recorder didn't really record the high frequencies very well. It was always a little bit muffled, and especially muffled if you're using 1 and 7, 8 inches per second. Even if you're using really good tape, and have absolutely pristine clean heads, it was always a little bit muffled. Now, in this little cavity here, there were two variable resistors, and you can see I've removed the one on the right, but if I turn that up all the way so it was at its maximum 22 kilo ohm resistance, it did increase the high frequency response of the recording a little bit, but not by much. So I did a little bit of experimenting, and I found out that at about 32k was where the high frequencies got recorded nice and good. So I replaced that variable resistor with a 22 kilo ohm resistor, and that's in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And the reason why it's on this switch here is because at the 22 kilo ohms, on good tape, it will record the treble good, but on most tapes, 22 kilo ohms isn't enough to get a good treble response, so I can switch that 10 kilo ohms into the circuit, and it will record nice and clearly. So now, this tape recorder can work with two different types of tapes, and still get a good recording, even at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. Now, some of you might be saying, well, you're adjusting the bias! So that's why the high frequencies are getting better, because as you add more resistance there, there's less bias getting through, and that's what you're actually doing. But here's the thing. If I make that resistor completely open circuit, the tape recorder still records. It still makes a nice, clear recording. And distortion-wise, there's no more or less distortion there. 
It just has crazy response on the high frequencies. And in case you're wondering how this tape recorder sounds right now, well, this commentary that you've been hearing was recorded on this very tape recorder. Alright, so now I am making a recording, let me just turn my microphone up a little bit. I am making a recording at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second on this tape recorder with the new improved recording, well, the modified recording equalization circuit. I can see my meter move as I talk. And now I'm going to switch to 3 and 3 fourths. I'm now making a recording at 3 and 3 fourths to see what the sound quality is like at 3 and 3 fourths with my handy microphone so let's see how this came out ok let's just switch that back to 1 and 7 eighths and let's see what we get Okay, there's some music I recorded at 1 and 7 8, so we can hear how that sounded as well. I think that did a pretty good right. job recording music. So now I am making a recording. Let me just turn my microphone up a little bit. I am making a recording at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second on this tape recorder with the new improved recording, well, the modified recording equalization circuit. I can see my meter move as I talk. And now I'm going to switch to 3 and 3 fourths. Well, I think that worked pretty good. Sounds a little bit splattery, but it's it's always been like that, even before I made the uh, modifications. So, let's hear the 3 and 3 fourths recording. I'm now making a recording at 3 and 3 fourths to see what the sound quality is like at 3 and 3 fourths. With my handy microphone. So, let's see how this came out. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that sounded pretty damn good. So, there we go. Here is the restored Philips N4308 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And I've even found that counter window. Still don't have those two knobs, unfortunately, so that's just going to have to stay like that. Anyway, now switch to 3 and 3 fourths. So, anyway... Some of you are probably wondering, what about that modification that I made? Where is that switch? Well, if we take a look at the back of the tape recorder, there it is, in that little cavity where nobody would ever know. So anyway, that's just about it for this video. So, um, that's it from me, Cool Dude Clem, and that's it from this tape recorder. So, until next time, goodbye.